Man, what can it blow up? My God, look at that thing. Green eyes. Damn, look at him. Oh, that's insane. I mean, I knew they puffed up, but I didn't think they'd get that big. When you drop your line in salt water, you may be trying to catch a targeted species, but you never really know what to expect. Oh, that's insane. Look how big he is. What happened? He just deflated, that's all. He's got some real sharp teeth. Uh, Two on the bottom, one on the top. There he goes again. See those little teeth? Oh, yeah. Today, we're going to show you some of the surprise catches from the past few years. It's rap music. Rap Master Jim. <laughs> Make him deflate. Whoa! See, he performs right on top. How Fine. did you do that? Oh, it's a secret. I'll tell you someday. I, I taught you some of the things I know, but not everything. How'd you make him deep, 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 deep Just, gush there? It's magic, I told you. Damn! Now we were fishing for small gray trout near the Kiptapee concrete ships when this sturgeon surprised us. Do you want to you want to take it? That's my first sturgeon ever. Yeah. Sturgeon for the surgeon. <laughs> sturgeon for the surgeon. Yeah. He's 34 inches long. Okay. That's okay. You ready? Ready. Pretty work. Now this is what they look like about 100 years later, and we're in the Columbia River Gorge. Ready? Ready. Pretty work. Usually that, uh, that size fish could weigh another 100 pounds. It could be as big, real big around. But this fish has been in the river for a while. You can tell by the size of it. And the, uh, when they're fresh from the ocean, they're bigger around. This fish has been here. Let's, Take the hook out of this fish now so we don't hurt him. Okay. And uh, just kind of watch him. Now, if he takes off, I'm going to let go of this stuff. I gathered. I hope so. I don't want to see him go with it. I got to reach. See, look at see the mouth on this fish. Now I got to. Oh, he's got it really deep. I may have to cut the line. I'm going to. This has got this hook about nine inches down his throat. Usually don't hook him that deep. Now remember, this is a sturgeon and not a shark. And this fish weighs several hundred pounds. Turning the other way here. He feels good size. Eight footer. He's coming, he's coming up, he's coming up. All of us have been known to tell fish tales occasionally, but the Oregon Historical Society can document one that didn't get away. Fishing with Pete Ambrose off Watchapig, Virginia for Tautog yielded this surprise. Now, there ain't nothing illegal about a hook and line lobster, is there? I, I guess we could charter out of Watchapig for Tautog and get lobster too, huh? You charge extra for lobster trips? Yes, sir. 
I, I, I'll just confiscate the live. <laughs> four, four inches close. Look to at the barnacles on it. Oh yeah, he looks good. I wish he had had it on you when you started hiring. Get the net. I got a lobster. What's this? Watch this way. Now this tautog weighed about 12 pounds, but that lobster tasted better. Where is your skate? On another tautog trip, I was again surprised by the catch. This was my very first sheep's head in Chesapeake Bay, and it tipped the scales at 14 pounds. We just had a fish roll right here. Now, none of us were brave enough to jump in and look around under the buoys. So we used a new device for us, which was an underwater camera. We were surprised at first to see so much activity. But remember, structure of any kind attracts attention. Now, these are spade fish passing by, and this footage was taken before we showed you how to catch them. And what we were really seeking today were trigger fish, which we knew how to catch. Ricky, that's when you hook up, we'll get a more experienced. Again, we were targeting Tautog, and this time Donald Bostick showed us how. Go eat, Kate. <laughs> you want me to go eat some more? <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. Is this a keeper? A female. Wait a minute. Now, Dr. Barry Stillman wasn't exactly Whatever proud of this catch, do. but we were all too familiar with them. We could almost rename our boat in their honor. <laughs> the horror of the day. <laughs> uh, that's the horror of the day. Wait, wait, it's a double! Wait a minute! Oh. Oh. <laughs> not only that, the ram boat. And not only that, Chip's probably got a bigger one yet. Oh no. <laughs> There we go. This is Oyster Toad City today. And we're proud of these too. Jimmy Cobb, eat your heart out. We know you'd like to have one of these, but you just aren't up to catching one of these. We got a matched pair. Now this species is really graceful and beautiful compared to the ignominious toadfish. It usually surprises us while drifting for flounder. Although it has a few sharp horns on the gill plate, its skin is smooth. It literally walks on the bottom on its feet. Isn't it graceful? It's absolutely beautiful. And those are those feet. It literally walks across the bottom. Now these large pectoral fins let it move around freely compared to the lobster that can only walk on the bottom. Got it. Got now these beautiful know. fish, which resemble giant angelfish, appear around structure in schools which number in the thousands. 
Also, they're delicious to eat and easy to catch. Oh, was it David who got that? Okay, if it was David, then it was David. David's leading in two things now. Yeah, you got one. Twelve times three hundred. Put my name on that one, cause, cause that's cause that's a good enough one to be yours, huh? You're gonna get Angler of the Month this one for that one. Fifty-two inches. And uh, that's 51 and Woo! three quarter inches in length and 12 and a half for. Yep, you got a lot it. of people are good at a lot of things, but being a conger expert takes a real pro. And remember, if you're going to be a pro, you got to go where the pros go and do what the pros do. It's and if you want any tips on conger fishing, give me a call at BR549. Put David's on there and push the scale a little bit. So you you know, a lot of people put say a lot of things about us. They call us liars, they say we make stuff up. They say we're always bragging on everything, but let me tell you this. Show me one other boat that's went out here today in this whole marina right and caught a whole ton yeah, of these conger eels. Just, just show me one other boat. You know, folks, uh, people always ask us how we always catch so many good fish and big fish and all these off-the-wall fish. Look at these congers here. Well, there's a secret. You got to know how to do the conger dance, and here we go. Okay, all together now. One, two, three. Now these fish are usually caught while fishing for bluefish, tuna, or king mackerel. They look very characteristic. They are not tuna. I repeat, not tunas. You will never take a second helping or even return to the kitchen where they were cooked. So please take a very, very good look at these yeah, well, fish. Tip it a little bit. Turn it right side up so we can see it. We got it upside down. Yeah, now hold on, because he's going to take off in a minute. These Chesapeake Bay billfish are often caught in the midsummer while you're chumming for cobia. You want the bigger net? <laughs> well, kind of like a big fish, you know. Yeah, he ain't gonna swim in that one. Look at this. I'm having so much fun getting these pictures that I'll get the big net in here. Okay. Hang on, here he comes. Yes, sir. Chesapeake Bay houndfish, sought after species. Hold it, I'm gonna go in and tight on it so you hold it real still there. Fish too, you know? Yes, and you can hear them. All the, every single one of our, oh man, look at him snap at you. He, I think, I think you better, I think you better lower him into the water somewhere. Yeah, let me, let me come on this side, Doc, and we'll watch him swim off. Just stay right on him. I'm staying on him. I'm tight on him. I'm tight on him. I'm a little loose now. But... Now this strange looking shark is occasionally caught while trolling for tuna. Now the first one here took a cedar plug. Right, yeah. You can see it'll be hanging in its mouth right there. Now the second one took a trolled ballyhoo. Now this true shark grows up to a maximum of four feet and every angler knows to avoid his dentures. But don't forget his other defense equipment too. Okay. That thing's three feet long. What do you call that, a shiny? Directly in front of the dorsal fin is a real bony, solid spike, and he really knows how to use it. Always, always be careful when you're dealing with sharks. That's the first one, and there's another one in front of the other dorsal fin, too. Just like that. He's coming back up again.
That is a pollock. It's a cold water fish. It was hanging around Virginia Beach too long this spring. You got mail. Uh, uh, they tend to be a lot darker than the cod. Black backs. They feed just above the bottom. That's why their, their mouths are a little pointier. Let me come get, come let you have the camera. Yeah, I got a good picture of him now. <laughs> we gotta take him in. Is that right? Yeah. All right. We gonna land this one. <laughs> I wanna loose him. I wanna let him loose in Broad Bay. <laughs> Water skiers delight. Yes. Okay. I, you want me to quit? <laughs> that is a big Virginia flounder. Okay. And that's without the babies. That's right. Had all those babies too. Had babies in it? Had five yeah, babies. Yeah, had five babies. How'd you catch that thing? Just pulled it it Japanese flounder. Carolina flounder. Carolina flounder. Clear nose skate. Next time you catch a skate, remember this Johnson and Wales University special. This is one skate ring right here. And what this is, on the outside you have, it's a very gelatinous kind of a skin to it. One side is spiny, the other side is white. And I poach it off for about a minute on one side. And all you need to do is take your knife and scrape off that gelatinous skin. Here's a skate ring we have over here. And all you really need to do now is just take a fillet knife and feel a bone right behind over here and just start filleting it out, just like filleting a flounder or any kind of flat fish. You have a center fin here that you need to be uh, careful of. There's a lot of waste on it, but it's usually an item you don't want to catch anyway. Fillet on both sides over here. And I'll clarify butter is this butter, it's drawn butter, the butter that has the uh, just the fat without any milk solids. This way it gets a nice um, caramelization of the flour and it won't burn up on us. If you use straight whole flat um, whole butter to fry in, what's gonna happen is it's gonna burn on you. And that's just about ready right now. We'll take the skate wing, shaking off all the excess flour, you lay it in the pan, lay it away from you so you don't splatter any grease um, on your hand. With the, with the flour. If you just put a straight piece of fish in there without putting any flour on it, it's going to uh, burn up and dry up. It's not going to taste very good either. The flour really helps out with uh, giving a nice golden brown color and it uh, doesn't burn up on you. Take this, put this into the oven for about four or five minutes. You have to start sauteing soft sides. The first thing we're going to saute is our um, shallots. Shallots is um, kind of like an onion for its flavor, but it's more intense. We're looking for a nice golden brown color in our shallots. The next 
step is we're going to glaze it with some white wine. And about a cup of white wine over here. We add to the pan. Chopped fresh tomatoes. About a cup of chopped fresh tomatoes there. We have some set mushrooms over here. I hope you enjoyed the quickest half hour on TV.